Hi, welcome to How to Repair. Today we're going to be going into self-test mode or diagnostic mode which engineers use to understand faults. We're working on a Beko washing machine and it will apply to all of the Beko brands with the WTK series. This is a WTK 72011 and I'm actually doing the tests from the workshop manual. Now the workshop manual will be for the test sequence in the description below and I'll put a link to the page where I've got all the transcript there but I'm going to do this in a simple format for you and explain what each feature does and how to rectify problems with the machine. It would be useful when it comes to the heating test mode that you do have something to be able to understand that the ampage is being drawn on the machine. Now I have meters on all my sockets and it shows me what wattage and what ampage is being drawn. But I'll do this in layman's terms for you so you can understand what each individual feature is doing and what you should be looking for with faults with the machine. Okay to enter test mode is quite an easy process and I'll just switch over to this side. There's a couple of things you need to be aware of. Firstly make sure the drum is completely empty of all clothing and any water in the bottom of the drum. This is very important. The reason being is it will flick between the motor test and the fill sequence uh, at a high RPM and this can cause problems with the drum itself if you were doing the test this way. I'm not quite happy that it doesn't have a pause factor between the motor test and the fill test because it would be a safer process but you must remember this was originally designed for engineers and engineers only and the Turkish have been very good and produced all the literature so I can teach you to do this properly especially when you're not able to call engineers out to the house because it might be expensive in these hard times. Uh, second thing is to be aware of I normally turn the machine off for a couple of minutes prior to going into test mode. Now sometimes it's tricky to get into the test sequence because it might have something stored in the EEPROM already which is the memory chip. So shut the door once the drum is empty, hold down the start pause button while turning the dial to position 1. You would normally see a 1200 light come on and as you can see it hasn't gone into Everco into the test mode there so we'll do it again press the start pause button turn the dial to position 1 the 1200 now it has gone into test mode because you saw the 1200 come on and the time delay button uh, light came on at the bottom you heard a click and the door lock is locked this means that it's gone into diagnostic mode. Now on the LCD version uh, which has an actual display screen and also this analog version which only has lights showing up it would normally hold the last error code that was stored in the machine. So you may see different lights and these are related to the error codes. And I, as I said I will put all the literature in for this on the web page and all the error codes as well related to this. But that done, we are now in the test sequence. And the first test it will do is it will show you that all the lights are flashing correctly. We've just gone into the test sequence here and it will just keep flashing these lights and you're able to check all the bulbs are working. On the LCD display it would show you that all the functions are working on that. Now the first test that we're going to do now after this one, test number two as I'll call it, is basically testing the motor action in a right hand rotation. Now I would normally have the machine, the back of the machine off and I would use a digital tachometer which would actually tell me what the drum is rotating at. But pretty much you're able to understand that the drum is rotating at the correct speed because you will see it rotate now. So pressing that down again, we have the wash and the time delay lights are showing and the drum has gone into a right hand rotation at 52 RPM. The next time we press this, 
it will go into the left hand rotation. Just for note here you can see that the motor at 52 rpm is only pulling 16 watts of energy. This is because it's using an induction motor which is much more efficient than the carbon brush motors that they used to fit. I wouldn't say the circuit boards as are reliable but they are a good motor. Very rare do I come across motors that actually fail, it's normally the control board that fails. So next time we press it, test 3, the lights will change to just rinse only light and it goes into an anti-clockwise rotation as you can see here. The next test is a variable spin all the way up to the maximum RPM on this machine it's 1200 but this is where you need to be aware that when you flick from this test that I'm going to do next to the next test which is testing the water valves the drum has to slow down but water is going into the machine so if you had clothing in there you could do damage to the machine and this is why it's very important so we'll press, press test 3 sorry and this now, if there was water in the machine, would do a little bit of an empty, but it's going into a right-hand rotation, and you can see that the current is increasing, and we're pulling 50 watts, and the RPM will slowly rise to the maximum RPM. And this would actually be very useful with the tachometer to know that it's functioning correctly, but I can do it by ear, so it's not a problem. This will continue going up, all the way through uh, to the maximum RPM and I'm going to let it do this it'll only take a minute just so you can see what actually happens when we go into the next test which is checking the right hand water valve um, we'll just let this build up it should be pulling somewhere in the region of 400 watts when it gets to maximum RPM now useful things that you'll find while it's doing this in the description below I'm putting a link to the full playlist uh, on Beco washing machines because I'm going to be doing videos on testing the element, the NTC sensor, the pump, how to change the pump door seal and also uh, how to actually test the motor, uh, circuit board problems and of course all the error codes as normal. But there will be a full playlist below. And as you can see now, we're coming up to maximum RPM, because I can tell by the sound. And we're pulling 350 watts, 360, 370. This is just coming up to the maximum now. And we are now pulling 417 watts. It will decrease slightly because it's got to the maximum RPM. But at maximum RPM, it's pulling 390 watts. Now as you can see, there is no water going into the door at the moment, but when I press this for the next test, water will go into the machine while the drum is slowing down. It didn't go in then, let me press it again. The lights have changed now to wash and rinse. The drum is just slowing down under its normal RPM, but water is going in the machine. This is where I think the manufacturer should actually have some pause to, to not allow this function to start until the drum has slowed down. But you can see water is going into the machine here and it's coming through on the right hand compartment. This is allowing one water valve to fill. There are two water valves or two cold water valves on this machine and each of the solenoids do a different function. The right hand uh, solenoid activates the right hand compartment the other solenoid will activate the activate the left hand compartment so if I just let this stop a second it will just shut down completely in a second water is coming through on the right hand side the drum has stopped and I can be a bit quieter now and if I press it again we have three lights showing on here. This means that the left hand water valve is now active and the right one has stopped. When I press the next one, which is just the spin light showing, all three compartments are filling with water. This means both of the solenoids are working. 
Both solenoids are coming on together to show you that the water is coming through the one valve and the other valve at the same time and the comfort container starts to fill with water. So all the water valves are working correctly. Now the next test is to do with the heater sequence and this is where the ampage meter is very important because it will only heat for about 30-40 seconds while it's testing the heating circuit and the NTC sensor. So if I press the start pause again you can see that the spin has come on and the wash has come on. This now is doing a 52 rpm right hand rotation but as you can see here we are pulling 2216 watts because the element is a two, uh, 2000 watt element and the ampage that's being drawn is 9.26 amps. Of course you wouldn't be able to feel necessarily with your hand that the water has warmed up because there is about a gallon of water in the machine at the moment. Uh, but because I have a test meter I'm able to understand that this is working correctly. Now as you can see the machine has actually finished its test sequence automatically. It ran for about a minute. I can feel a little bit of heat on the glass but not a lot. Um, if it was in a warm house then you might not actually be able to tell without an ampage meter that the heater was working correctly. Now there is water still left in the machine, so if we turn it to the off position, then turn it to the spin position and press start, you'll be able to get rid of the water. But the machine has gone through the whole test cycle perfectly and there are no faults with the machine. As I said, if you do have one of the functions not working correctly, then this diagnostic program will help you ascertain what the problem is with each individual component. Thank you very much indeed for watching this video. I hope it assisted you. Remember there is a link in the description below that will take you through to the full workshop manual on the diagnostic sequence on this machine. And if you do need any parts for the washing machine, remember we sell all the parts and that's what keeps us going and able to make these free videos for you. Thank you very much indeed for watching. And please remember if we really helped you, you can always click on the Bipolar Beer page. Thanks for watching.